We are continuing with our text design for our poster. This is for assignment six. The last thing we did was we created vector outlines of our type layers. So remember that I was using type tools. The, the T here, the same in Photoshop as it is in Illustrator, to basically make this type in ways, you can still see the type layers here, in ways that can be edited like a, uh, a word processing document. And so I have all that type here. But then I had to create outlines on it. So I'm just going to remind you how to do that. Once you feel you've done everything you can with the type tools, so here is an example of a layer with type tools. I can use the T and I can click on it. And it's just like a word processor. You know, I can select it, I can change. The type selection, I can change the font, I can change the spacing between the type, I can do all that kind of stuff. And I have multiple typefaces, I have multiple weights. I've done this all to be type on a path to give it that different the different curves. Once you're happy with that, you need to make a duplicate of it, open it up, and then right click on the, the type line underneath. And you've got to make sure you have nothing selected. And you'll get this option. <laughs> of course it worked for me before all right there you go of create outlines creating outlines will trace this just like live tracing into vectors with anchors that you can modify so i always do that on duplicates so the duplicate is up here and you can see now that i did the create outlines and now I am able to modify this type. Now the one that clearly needs modification is the O. I need to make it kind of fit with these a little bit better. So how can I do that? Well, this is just treating it like a vector. I can add a stroke to it. I'm going to make sure that that stroke is a solid black. And I'm going to play with its properties to make it the thickness I want. Maybe that thick. Then I can use the large selection tool and I can actually do different things like rotate it so that it's more horizontal, then click off of it, then click on it again. Just that letter. What's kind of fun is when you outline type, then it gives you a separate path for each letter. And then I can grow it. I keep isolating just that letter. And rotate it so it fits with what I'm doing. I might even choose to do something like this and then hold down shift and then rotate it and then squash it down the other way. And then I'm going to show you another trick here. Because they're all vectors now, it's a vector with a stroke. I can take my lasso, I can cut it in half. So I'm selecting just the points on one half of the O, and then I can use my small selection tool and drag that out. Yeah, and further customize this just in any way I might want. And so that's starting to look a little bit better and fitting with my other typefaces. And then maybe I want to thicken the stroke on it. So I have full control of each letter this way, like so. And then when I'm happy with the stroke weight, I'm gonna say object path outline stroke. And now because that overlaps the fill, I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool. Again, it can be found under Windows and merge those together. So now it's just one big solid O that I can redraw if I need to. So sometimes you want really, really 
perfect machine-made type. But sometimes you want it to be a little bit hand done, a little bit uh, customized. And I always like to customize it just enough so I understand why I, I did what I did. I'm just using the pencil tool just to smooth it. The nice thing about modifying from existing typefaces is it won't give you a ton of extra anchor points. I do like the slightly squared off, just slightly, slightly squared off O. It fills that space well. And remember, the pencil tool is great. You can set that on different smoothnesses. But then you can also use the smooth tool just to average everything. Which on something like an O, which is very rounded, doesn't have any sharp angles, that's a good option. And then I can do the large selection tool and just last tweaking and turning and placing. So I can hand place each type. Same thing with the C. There's a lot of wonkiness in that, even though I didn't draw that by hand, right? That's just from the typeface. So if I want to smooth that out, I can. Just use the smooth tool. See how it will average out all those anchor points. And then this is maybe my favorite thing in customizing type in Illustrator because it's hard to draw. For me, it's hard to draw like perfectly clean type. So if I want to move the C, the top and the bottom here, so it doesn't look so closed, what I do is I use my lasso tool. I grab just the, the crown of that and I use my small selection tool. And then I can move that up, up and in. And then same thing with the bottom. Grab the crown, move it down and in. So I can soften that C a little bit. And then of course I can always redraw smooth. If I don't like how it cuts in so much there, I can just use the pencil tool. So vectors give you all of that control. And you're just going for something that, that looks right to you. Same thing with the L's. I can redraw a little bit. especially so they're not so identical. And because I have smooth turned on for the pencil, it's going to do a lot of what the smooth tool does as I use it. Then I can always use the smooth tool for areas that just have too many anchor points. And I'm just using the shortcut of the command key to get back to my small selection tool when I need to. And I can definitely come around and help you troubleshoot any issues you're having with your type. So also remember this is type that goes on a poster along with an illustration. It's customized. It's not about getting every aspect of it just perfect. But you want to be aware of it all. Different typefaces are different. So this G now looks really stiff compared to everything else. 
So I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to put a stroke on it, and I'm going to make that stroke non-uniform. I'm going to make it wavy and then larger. And that's going to throw these proportions off a little bit. Make it a little bit more uh, wonky. And then I'm going to do the simple object path outline stroke. And then I'm going to merge the overlapping so it's one shape. And then I can use my pencil tool and I can round those corners a little bit. Maybe shorten that stem. Just so it feels a little bit more consistent with the other forms. And I can use the smooth tool. And I just want you to know you have control of all this stuff. So if something's not quite feeling right, you have you are empowered to, to work with it and fix it. All right, I think the last thing that just bugs me a little bit is the speed. When I started, I'm just going to round the back of it. So I'm play with that. So how do you learn type design? By really looking closely at type and realizing what you have the power to change and how to do it. And Illustrator makes that really pretty accessible, a whole lot easier than, than painting it out with graphic black and white and then getting it photostated for printing, which was the old method of typesetting for posters. Actually, I love how that G looks now. That's a nice G. And if you find you just fall in love with this kind of process of customizing type, then you might actually be interested in typography as a design career. And you could be one of those designers that makes your typefaces previewable on Defont. And you can license them for sale. And it's just another one of these digital art careers. It's pretty important to our contemporary world. To always have new typefaces. So I'm going to save that. So college is done. I can lock that one. Lakeview. So I feel like I have full control now of each letter. And I feel like I might as well space it so that it's not overlapping with my, uh, my illustration as much or more purposefully. Let's see. So the K seems a little out of place. So I'll start there. Open up, open up the group, find the K, and just select that. Let me add a stroke to it, play with that, thicken it up a little bit. I can make it a uniform stroke or I can make it a wavy stroke. I think I'll keep this one uniform. Then I'm going to outline that stroke, object path outline stroke, and then merge it together with the fill. So it's all one. And now I'm going to use the large selection tool and play with the scaling of it a little bit. And because it's at an angle already, that's going to play with its proportions. I can use the arrow key to fix the kerning. And then I can use the small selection and just move certain areas, certain anchor points. That reads pretty well. Okay, now I want to smooth it out a little bit. Now this is a typeface that has very few 
anchor point. 